Hello, welcome to this video from IMG Revision. In this video, we're going to be looking at core vocabulary from the paper one topic, Tropical Rainforests. Now, the aim of these videos is to improve your knowledge and understanding and fluency of the key terminology in this topic. Now, you've got the option of going to the Google Drive uh, attached with the link below, downloading this worksheet. You can print it off or work with it. Uh, on your computer or simply print screen print that fails grab a copy off your teacher then attempt to define all the words before watching the video watch the video go through correct any words you don't know and hopefully that will improve your understanding so first of all tropical rainforest tropical rainforest is a biome that is generally found at and around the equator they are warm due to the concentration of the sun's energy and they have high levels of precipitation and as a result of this they are very biodiverse with large amounts of plants and animals in terms of climate so the climate is the average weather conditions over a year and what we expect weather to be at certain times of the year and as you can see they generally have very high precipitation and high temperatures over a year, they're going to have over 2,000 millimetres of precipitation rainfall, and temperatures are going to range about 26, 29 degrees Celsius. Okay, forest floor. Tropical rainforests have four distinct layers. The first layer is the forest floor, and this is going to, this is at the bottom of the forest, makes sense, the forest floor. This is going to have very little sunlight, okay, and what happens at the bottom is that plants and dead animals are going to decompose very, very quickly. The next layer is the under canopy. So the under canopy is going to receive more sunlight, okay? And it's characterized by the tall, straight tree trunks of the trees growing high up as quickly as possible to get as much sunlight. And things like vines that are going to connect the trees and epiphytes, other plants that live on the trees. The next is the canopy. The canopy is the most biodiverse layer of the tropical rainforest where you're going to find uh, most uh, animals and birds uh, and it also receives a large amount of sunlight. The emergent layer is the final layer. Now the emergent trees are the tallest and these have to face the most extreme conditions due to them being uh, it's constant sunlight beaming down and the high levels of precipitation uh, that they experienced. And we sometimes refer to the top of the tree as the crown of the tree. Water, quite a common word that you're probably already familiar with. In terms of the tropical rainforest, they receive 2,000 millimetres of precipitation per year. It is very, very wet. Soils. You would think that due to the amount of plants and trees, vegetation in the tropical rainforest, that the soils are very, very fertile. However, it's only the very top layer that is full of nutrients, hence why trees tend to have wide roots. The soil below is often red and infertile, and it's referred to as uh, latter soil. It is iron rich. So just remembering that the soil generally is quite infertile in the tropical rainforest. Plants. The largest number of species uh, of plant anywhere in the world are found in the tropical rainforest biome. It is very biodiverse and we'll see that these plants have specific adaptations that enable them to thrive in the tropical rainforest. For example, these fern leaves have got pointy drip tip ends, so precipitation will just run off really quickly and this reduces weight on the leaf and stops them from breaking and rotting. People Although people um, in the tropical rainforest are not as well represented as they probably should be, there are over 400 tribes who still live in the tropical rainforest, many of them without contact with the outside world. One of the peop uh, tribes is the Hurani tribe who live in the Amazon rainforest. Interdependence. Interdependence is quite a complex term. However, we can simplify it by thinking that two things are dependent on each other, okay? For example, in the tropical rainforest, the vegetation is dependent on the climate and the soil. However, the soil is also dependent on the vegetation. For example, the vegetation takes its nutrients from the soil, allowing the vegetation to grow. However, when the plants die, 
the nutrients are recycled back into the soil. So the two are interdependent on each other. Animal adaptation. Adaptation is physical or behavioural changes that enable an animal to thrive in their habitat. The example we can use is the toucan. It has got this beautifully uh, coloured beak, which it can use to attract a mate. The more colourful, the better. It is also uh, large and made from a honeycomb structure. So it is strong, lightweight, and this allows it to reach berries and nuts on other branches. Great adaptation. Plant adaptation, check out this guy with this massive leaf. Uh, ultimately, it's when plants have adapted to best suit their environment. You will find that trees and plants in the tropical rainforest are very dark green. This is because they are full of chlorophyll to increase the rate of photosynthesis. They also have a waxy surface, a waxy cuticle, so that water will drip off quickly. Drip tips we've already, we've already mentioned. Ultimately, leaves will have a drip tip so that water can run off saving the weight on the root. Buttress roots, great plant adaptation. Large buttress roots support the very, very tall trees that can grow 30, 40 metres tall. Also, you will notice they have this ridged appearance. This is so that they have a large surface area which will facilitate rapid gas exchange. They can breathe in carbon dioxide quickly, breathe out oxygen quickly. It means they have adapted to grow in the tropical rainforest. Biodiversity, biological, alive, diversity, different. Tropical rainforest is the most biodiverse biome on the planet. Economic, so when we're talking about economic, we can dual code with a dollar sign. It is anything to do with money, jobs, business, work. In the tropical rainforest, uh, a lot of people are employed in industries such as cattle ranching and logging. Environmental is anything to do with the natural world. Examples include air, water and soil. A lot of the economic activities in the tropical rainforest can have negative environmental implications, such as water pollution and soil erosion. Deforestation, D, damaging disrepair, ultimately cutting down the forest. Deforestation, removing the trees. Subsistence farming. If you're a farmer, you're going to grow crops or rear animals. When you're a subsistence farmer, there is no element of trade. Ultimately, you're growing enough food to feed your own family. In contrast, commercial farming is larger scale, Okay, often involves the use of machinery, and the crops you buy are going to be sold at market, maybe exported internationally. Logging is an economic activity in a tropical rainforest. Trees are marked, cut down, and then they're exported elsewhere, and these can be used for building structures such as houses and settlements or for making furniture. Mineral extraction is ultimately when we take stuff out of the ground that's got value. Minerals that can be extracted uh, in tropical rainforests are gold. However, as well as the scarring of the landscape caused by the economic and industrial activity. The chemicals used in the process of gold mining, for example, such as cyanide, can poison water supplies. And if you're drinking poison water, you're probably going to get a little bit poorly. Energy development. Tropical rainforest is ripe for energy development. One of the main ways we make energy in the tropical rainforest is by creating dams. Dams will hold water back that then can be released uh, in a controlled manner. Spinning turbines creating hydroelectric power, clean, renewable electricity. A settlement is a place where people live. Check out this beautiful settlement of a rainforest tribe. They're probably looking up thinking, what's that thing flying over ahead? Population growth. So population growth is when the birth rate exceeds the death rate. Okay, simple as that. More babies than people dying, population goes up. Soil erosion. Soil erosion occurs when the canopy of the rainforest is removed. Years worth of soil that's formed in the tropical rainforest can be washed away in a matter of hours. This leaves, as you can see here, these red infertile soil behind, which is not good to grow anything. Climate change. So climate change is the long-term changing of temperature and precipitation and the patterns of this globally. 
as a result of deforestation, there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because the trees are a carbon sink and less carbon is being removed. And this can lead to climate change and global warming. Sustainable. Sustainable means providing for people now without damaging the environment for future generations. If we're going to use the tropical rainforest, we need to bear in mind that our actions are going to have implications for our children. So we need to consider ways that we can use the rainforest without damaging it. Uh, an example of this would be ecotourism. Another example is selective logging. A lot of trees in the tropical rainforest are cleared, even if they only want one of the trees, because it's cheaper that way. Selective logging, what will happen is trees will be marked and steps will be taken to ensure the surrounding trees are not damaged when this tree is removed. Conservation and education, so if you conserve something, conserve something, you protect it. And take, educating people, often using locals as the tour guides, is a very sustainable way of ensuring we can protect the rainforest for future generations. Ecotourism, so tourism is uh, a way of LICs and NEEs to develop and make money. When we use ecotourism, such as these huts in the tropical rainforest, they are built using local materials so they don't have a negative impact on the visual environment. And the people who run these are local, so the, uh, the economic benefits stay within the local communities. International agreements. So an international agreement is ultimately a deal between two countries. Many high-income countries are doing deals with countries in tropical rainforests and they are saying, right, if you don't cut down the rainforest, okay, we will let you off with the debt repayments on this loan that you owe. So it's a deal between two countries to try and protect the rainforest. Debt reduction is very, very simple. As we can see in this picture, stop damaging the tropical rainforest we will let you off with money, sometimes called debt for nature swaps. And this will protect the tropical rainforest in a sustainable way. Okay, really long video with lots of key terminology. However, anything that you didn't get right first time, correct in green pen and see if you can do better next time.